fair lady, that's their library. I mean, it's a double library with a ladder around. It's, it's just great. And then they have a dog, Jenny. And ironically, she's black and white, like the rest of the sisters. And then they have a cat. And it's a real live community. A real live community. And I go there once a month, like I said, for an hour. And I get myself refreshed. Just by being there. Much less talking with sister. So I think about that. And then I think about why did they call themselves the Community of St. John? Why St. John the Baptist? And I think it's because John was kind of a renegade in his way. He paved the way. He was the messenger. Now, I can't speak for the sisters. I know that I'm an associate of that organization. I was kind of inducted into that. But I can understand why, because John had a mission, and so did these sisters. If you ever get an opportunity to go there, I, I encourage this church, if you ever want to have a nice retreat for a weekend, or even just a night, that's the place to go. And it's a way to really get yourself refreshed in many ways. So I highly recommend that place. It's a great place. So John served as a messenger. He was the watchman. He, as I said before, he paved the way to Jesus. Even when he was sitting in jail, knowing that he was about to die. And yet, Jesus reassures John's disciples. He reassures them with hope. He says that, listen, the blind, tell John, the blind will see again. Tell John the lame will walk. Tell John that those who are ill will be healed, and the deaf shall hear, and the dead shall be raised, and the poor will receive good news. He tells the crowd, yes, John is a prophet. John is a prophet. And he even quotes, Jesus even quotes the book of Malachi and Isaiah. See, I am sending a messenger ahead of you. I am sending a messenger ahead of you. And then Jesus asks the crowd, remember he was asking them questions? He says, what, 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 did, you, you know, what did you expect to see out in the wilderness? What are you looking at? Did you expect to see somebody dressed up in robes and all that stuff? A prophet? Yes. John was more than a prophet, Jesus says. John was the one whom it was foretold. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare the way before you. That's what it says about John. And we all remember John is his second cousin, remember? And then he says, truly I tell you, this is the greatest compliment Jesus gives to John, about John. Truly I tell you, among those born of women, no one, no one is greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven, no one is greater than he. What a statement. What a compliment. That's what Jesus thought of John. How important this man was. There are certain figures during the season of Lent that we have to keep in our hearts. It's not just about Jesus. It's about all those about Jesus and those that follow Jesus. And remember, John was, was six months older than Jesus. So he was a baby too. 
when Jesus was born. It was John who leapt for joy in his mother's womb when Mary told Elizabeth that she was with child. So let us embrace, let us try to encompass and wrap our hands around the significance of John the Baptist, who he was, why he was so important, what he meant to Jesus. Let us pray. Almighty God, by whose providence your servant John the Baptist was wonderfully born and sent to prepare the way of your Son, our Savior, by preaching repentance, make us so to follow his teaching and holy life that we may truly repent according to his preaching and following his example. Constantly speak the truth. Boldly rebuke those in error and patiently suffer for the truth's sake. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. And now let us reaffirm our faith by saying the Apostles' Creed found in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary, and suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and died in Mary. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now, as our Lord Jesus Christ has taught us, we are bold to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for and ever. Amen. <coughs> Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way. Let your way be known upon the earth. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Create in us clean hearts, O God. Now, are there any joys or concerns?
dad's name? Angus. Angus. He's on here. Uh, He's on here also. Rest in peace. I didn't put an Angus rest in peace because when I go to you, it's a lot. But thank you. Let us, let us be in prayer for a moment, please. Heavenly Father, we ask you to accept into your heavenly kingdom your servant, Angus. Welcome him here, Lord. And all the saints who have gone before him, we know that he's gone in love and with his son. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Are there any other joys? I have a joy here. We have a happy birthday to John. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear John. Happy birthday to you and many more. Yeah. Any other joys, concerns? I want to thank those of you who did, uh, you were, as you are well aware, I was not here last Sunday, and I was up in Newton uh, at my concert conducting my choir up there, and there was <clears throat> several of you who did attend that concert. Thank you for going. I really appreciate it, the support and so forth. Not only did I have some support from this church, but I had some of my own little parish in the Mount Monica who attended as well. So thank you so much. I really appreciate you being there. Um, also, I want to just remind everybody, it's in the, your bulletin also, um, how important it is, and probably I was preaching to choir on this, how important it is that you turn in your pledge cards um, and that if you know somebody who has not done so, to kindly urge them to get their pledge cards in. Um, every single church I know depends upon their pledges. Um, and that's how they can fashion a budget. That's the only way they can fashion a budget is based upon what people are going to pledge, what they think they're going to pledge. So I strongly urge you, if you've not turned in your pledge card, to do so. Um, and if you, know, if you know someone who has not done it yet, I think it's till December, what, 15th or 14th, you can turn your pledge cards in. Is that right? 15th. The 15th, okay. Um, but I, I, this, this church, in order to survive, as in any church, but particularly this church, you're at a crossroads, I've said this to you before, where you're trying to secure a new pastor, but you can't do it unless you know what you have to work with. So it's very important that everybody please uh, turn in their, their pledge cards um, and, and make that pledge so that the powers that be that run this church can, can make some uh, really discerning um, decisions about where this church needs to go. So that's, that's my little mini lecture about how important that is. Um, let us keep in our prayers the following people. Joanne, Debbie, Carol, Drew and family, Kathy and John, Steve, Ellen, Stephanie, Ryan, Angus, Kim and family, Lisa, Lois, Sally, and Phil. And now let us say together the most appropriate prayer that is attributed to St. Francis in your bulletin, please. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, 
For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born into eternal life. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And let us ascribe to the Lord and bring honor and gifts unto his name. singers, and they will be performing a variety of Christmas music today at 4 p.m. December the 18th uh, at Christ Church in Newton, they will be doing lessons and carols up there with orchestra and an organ, so uh, I'll remind you of that too in the future. So, with that said, let us now sing verses 3 and 4 of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
dost thou and for the Lord. Amen. Let us go forth rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God.